Good morning and welcome to Saturday, March 14th, 2020. And today's devotion is titled, The Responsibilities We Have to God. And we'll be reading out of the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 17. And it reads, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. This passage is a great discourse on Christian responsibilities to God. We cannot cover them all, so today we'll talk about the final item in the armor of God, the helmet of salvation. The need for a helmet in a soldier's armor seems self-evident. The head is both one of the most vulnerable and most visible targets on any human. A sufficient blow to the head is almost certain to be fatal. Our head, or more precisely, our mind, is also one of the most vulnerable parts of us to be attacked by Satan. What are these attacks on our minds? Satan wants us to doubt that we are eternally secure in our salvation in Jesus Christ. If he can divert us into a constant effort to maintain our reconciliation to God, then he can render us useless in our service to God. Since Paul was apparently speaking to believers in this passage, he's probably not referring to the helmet of salvation as the fact of being saved itself. He seems certain to be referring to the hope which we have in the salvation we already possess. Our salvation is eternally protected by God, and the helmet of salvation is simply the assurance that we have, that we have salvation no matter the doubts that Satan may cast in our paths. Do not let those doubts and discouragement turn you away from the things God really wants you to concentrate on. And our final thought is, the devil knows that Christians in a constant state of doubt and uncertainty are useless Christians. You know, the devil, and I've heard this term used many times, the, de the devil is brilliantly stupid. He's brilliant in that he uses tactics and maneuvers to manipulate humans. He he speaks to our minds and our brains and gives us thoughts that are impure and contradict the Word of God. In that sense, he's brilliant, but in another sense, he's stupid because he has got to ultimately know that he's defeated. He is not the Creator. He was a created being by God, yet he tries and strives to be on an equal plane with God, and that's impossible. A creation cannot be equal to or greater than its Creator. So in that sense, like I said, the devil is brilliantly stupid. But since he knows his fate is doomed, ultimately his only retaliation to God is to try to steal God's children away from him. What he may feel, uh, fail to realize is once God has a child in his hands, the Bible says no man can pluck from God's hands what's already there. And once you become a, a saved child of God, you are within the grasp of God. You're in his hands. And no man, no thing, no creature, no being can pluck you out from God's protection. So as, as clever as the devil may try to be, as he may try to put doubts in your mind, as he may try to confuse you and confuse your understanding of the word, don't let it get to you. Just be assured that you are secured eternally with God forever. Secured salvation. Salvation is not a thing that you can go get and then lose. It's not something that you can get and forget about and then lose it or misplace it or you know destroy it. Salvation is an eternal gift from God, and once he's given it to you, it's there forever. The devil will try to convince you that you can lose it. But what he's doing is he's putting a stumbling block between you and the Lord. So instead of focusing on what God wants you to do, you're more worried about trying to keep your salvation with the Lord. That's a beautiful tactic on, on Satan's part. I, I give him credit for that, that's very clever. But again, it's cl cleverly stupid because you cannot lose your salvation. So focus on what God's asking you to do. Don't focus on what Satan is tempting you to do. The two are opposed to each other, they contradict each other. Don't let them win. Listen to God, read your Bible, focus on the word, Study the truth. If you study the truth, you don't need to worry about the falsehoods. But if you focus on the false, false things in the world, you may get that fuzzied up and blurred with what is true. So focus on the truth, study the truth, 
and stay in contact with God with perpetual prayer. So thanks again for watching, guys. I, I appreciate your support of these devotions. Uh, I, can, I continue to ask if you could share these with other people. Um, if it brings you encouragement, please, by all means, share it with others. Let them be encouraged as well. So thanks again. We'll catch you all tomorrow. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye.